Alright guys, we are back on location. Back to this walk-in freezer that we had an issue with the frost buildup. As you can tell, we still have that same issue. Now this is my third visit here. The initial visit was the video I released, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. And I had a second visit that I wasn't able to film anything on, and in that visit I replaced my defrost termination fan delay switch. Not because I found a problem with it, only because the manufacturer wanted me to replace this. This is a warranty deal, so I am basically just the, the hands and eyes of the manufacturer. Anyways guys, I'm going to put it in defrost and kind of just re-verify that my defrost termination switch is taking it out of defrost. So I'm going to run two consecutive defrosts right here. So we're just about in defrost, and I'm going to put it for, we'll say, 45 minutes. We are 35 minutes into this defrost cycle. Again, air temperature in front of the evaporator, 60 degrees. Behind here, 112 degrees. The water droplets on the ceiling are starting to thaw, finally. Surface temperature next to the termination switch is still 38 degrees, so that's not going to open yet, or close rather, and kick us out of defrost. Tubing on our evaporator coil, it's 85, 95 degrees. All right, guys, here's our final numbers. 37 minutes into defrost, we finally came out, came out on the termination switch. 60 degrees and 113 degrees behind it. Surface temperature near it. It's still about 40 degrees. That's our final numbers, guys. I'm going to call tech support, let them know what I found, and go from there. Hey, what's up, YouTube? So we are back on site at this walk-in freezer defrost issue. And per the manufacturer, I am here today to replace the defrost clock. Now, I told the manufacturer I don't believe that's going to do any good because I haven't been able to find a problem with that defrost clock. Every time that I put it through a defrost, I am measuring the, the voltage at my X and my neutral terminals. And it's that, that termination switch is open until, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, whenever it goes into refrigeration mode. I don't have any sort of delayed reaction for my defrost clock. but. Yeah, for right now, I'm going to change out this defrost clock, run it through a couple defrost, basically repeat my experiment, and see if we get any different results, all right? So I'll throw in some highlights here and bring you along for the ride, all right? All right, guys. Here we are inside our walk-in freezer, of course, which if you didn't know what the inside of a walk-in freezer is, you need to watch more YouTube videos. Anyways, as you can tell, we don't have as bad of a ice buildup problem as we did last time. Um, I'm going to see if it maybe just recently came out of defrost. No, it didn't recently come out of defrost. The only thing I did last time I was here, it looks like somebody might have taken one of these out, but I put six defrosts at 15 minutes each. So I just shortened our defrost time so it wasn't in defrost as long. I think that's the key to this whole thing. I'm going to replace that defrost clock, like I said, run my experiments, and probably have the same results as I did last time. All right, we are now 39 minutes into our defrost cycle. Air in front of the evaporator is 62 degrees. We got about 100 degree air behind our evaporator. And let's just double check this brand new defrost termination switch that I installed on one of my previous visits. There we go. As you can tell, our defrost termination switch is not trying to kick us out of defrost. Let's take a quick surface temperature near the termination switch. Now that is a surface mounted defrost termination switch. So if the surface next to it is still 40 degrees and that switch trips around I think the manufacturer said 55 degrees, then we still have a ways to go until that termination switch trips in the position that it's in right now. And we're just about at 40 minutes. 
on a defrost with a coil that's obviously clean. Well guys, I didn't expect it to go this long. We are 45 minutes into our defrost. 62 degrees in front. 114 degrees behind the coil. Let's just double check our termination switch right here at X and neutral. So it is still open. We have a potential difference. So our termination switch is not trying to kick us out of defrost yet. And again, I have my defrost time set to an absurd amount, like two hours, just so I can see what temperature this termination switch kicks us out of defrost. Uh, surface temperature is getting about 44, 45, so it should be coming out of defrost soon. All right, 50 minutes. We just came out of defrost. I was standing outside and I could hear my condenser kick on. 61 degree air in front of the coil. 118 degrees behind the coil. Let's just simply double check our termination switch here. No difference. Termination switch is closed. All right guys, quick update. I spoke to the manufacturer and um, they apparently are okay with the results. So I'm just gonna do a follow-up visit in the next couple days and uh, see what see what happens. Now before I left, they did ask me to change the defrost time to four defrost per day at 30 minutes each. So we'll see what happens. I have a feeling in the next couple days I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna see more frost buildup because in my opinion, we're just going back to square one. I do have a new defrost clock, which I don't think was a problem. I do have a new defrost termination fan delay switch, which I also don't believe was the problem. Yeah, I don't know. That's a different one for me, but. All right guys, I'll see you in a couple days when I stop back for this follow-up visit. All right guys, this is the follow-up video. We are back on site. It's been about four days since my last visit here. And almost as I predicted, that defrost clock set to the same time isn't really doing any good as you can tell we're starting to get the frost build up again it's right there coming in through the seams but we're getting the telltale signs of over defrosting these little droplets hanging down and freezing like that so i'm going to go back to the manufacturer and tell them basically what they asked me to do isn't working look at all that depending on what the manufacturer says there may be a follow-up video to this but if not Thanks for watching. Hey, what's up YouTube? So it's been about a week since that last clip you saw. And during that week, I've been going back and forth with the manufacturer, um, trying to figure out a way to solve this uh, defrost issue this, this uh, customer's having. Now, my suggestion to the manufacturer was to put a defrost termination fan delay switch on one of the return bends of the evaporator coil so it has a better chance of sensing actual evaporator temperature instead of the surface mounted one that we have. Or I suggested that we possibly put in a, um, an off-brand like a, a Ranco or a KE2 controller in there so it's got a probe that goes right into the uh, evaporator coil itself to sense um, evaporator temperature during defrost so it kicks it out of defrost a little bit sooner. Um, in my opinion, the switch that they have doesn't accurately sense evaporator temperature. So anyway, back to the story at hand. The manufacturer wants me to replace the defrost termination fan delay switch again. So I'm gonna go in here, replace the switch, and we're going to uh, conduct a yet another defrost experiment while I let it go in defrost, see how long it takes, and sort of monitor the temperatures around the defrost termination switch and the evaporator coil to see what happens, all right? So stick around, hopefully something cool happens, all right? All right, guys, inside of the box here, of course, as you can tell, we obviously still have the same problem going on. This is my defrost termination switch that they want me to install right up inside of there. 
first. Let's see what our last defrost was. Okay, so it hasn't been a defrost recently. I don't have a real good place to set my little camera here, so I'll try to do this one-handed. Not too terrible, but it's kind of hard to reach. Drop that screw. There we go. See, just a surface-mounted defrost termination switch. Here's our new one. Pop that guy right on there. defrost termination switch itself. Our black wire. There we go. Making sure none of your wires are actually touching your your heating elements. Okay, be sure of that. All right, right up here to our red wire. defrost termination switch is installed. Kind of tuck some of these wires up out of the way. In case you guys notice this little wire hanging here, that little wire goes to this relay up in the corner. And apparently that relay is just a high and low speed for our fans. When this jumper wire is disconnected, our fans are in constant high speed. When the thermostat is satisfied, I think it goes at a low speed. So, all right guys, well, I'm going to turn the box on, let this defrost termination switch satisfy, make sure our fans are running, and then we'll do our little defrost experiment yet again. Alright guys, our box is at negative four. We're not even in defrost, you can already see just moisture coming through for whatever reason. Not real sure. Not real sure exactly what's going on in this case, but... Anyway, we're going to put it in a absurdly long defrost again so I can just uh, make sure that it's cutting out on termination instead of time. I'm going to set up a temperature probe right up behind the evaporator, one in front of the evaporator, and then I'll be monitoring that defrost termination switch about every five minutes. All right, so let me turn this off and turn my timer on. Real quick, 20 minutes into our defrost. You can see yet again we have a fog of moisture in the air. We are still in defrost. We're up to 90 degrees behind our evaporator coil. Let's check this real quick. Bingo bango. Not trying to get out of defrost yet. Air in front of the evaporator is 40 degrees. Surface temperature next to the termination switch is 30 degrees. So my best guesstimation, we're going to be in defrost for at least another 20 minutes. Alright guys, we're 30 minutes into our defrost. Still got a fog inside of our box. 
Air temperature in front of the evaporator coil, 60 degrees. Let's check behind it. All right, look at that. 11 degrees. Now, let's just make sure our defrost termination switch isn't trying to kick us out of defrost. And it's not. Last but not least, surface temperature near the defrost termination switch is 40 degrees, so probably gonna have another 10 minutes, I'm guessing. See, some of these return bins are 60, 90, 80 something, 90, 55. So all the return bins on my evaporator coil are well above freezing temperature, right? So now wouldn't it make more sense to have a defrost termination fan delay switch on one of these return bins? I mean, all the ones that I'm just, you know, testing the surface temperature on are well above freezing. 90, 60, 80, 55 is the lowest. And then we come up here and our surface where our defrost termination switch is mounted to is still at 41 degrees. Well, let's give her some more time. Hey guys, so I apologize. I was not able to get any footage of the unit coming out of defrost. My phone was down to about 2%. So I came out to my truck to charge it up a little bit. And by the time I got back in, it had just come out of defrost um, on the termination switch. It was about 38 minutes, I'm guesstimating. Uh, I walked in there and checked it before I came out of my van and that was about 35 minutes into it. Um, yeah, so it took about 38 minutes. And again, in my opinion, that's way too long because the evaporator coil was nice and clean um, you know, long before the 38 minute mark. And as you saw, when I was checking the return bends on the evaporator coil, a, a major portion of that evaporator coil was already way, way, way above the freezing temperature, way above 32 degrees. I mean, talking 80, 90, 60, I think the lowest, the lowest return bend I measured, and this was around 25, 30 minutes into the defrost cycle, the lowest temperature of the return bend was, um, or the return bend with the lowest temperature rather, was 55 degrees. So again, in my opinion, I think they would be better suited to have a defrost termination switch that's mounted right to one of the return bends, but just my opinion. So I don't think this repair is gonna do any good. I don't believe replacing that defrost termination switch will solve anything in this case. So we'll see. Um, I'm not sure if there'll be a follow-up to this video. So anyways, guys, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of a, long drawn out process, but I wanted to highlight this particular case because of the ongoing issues and the struggle with dealing with the warranty and the manufacturer and all the uh, all the fun stuff that I dealt with here today and over the last few weeks. So anyways guys, hope you liked it. Hope you got something out of it. If you do like it, hit that subscribe button for me. Even that little bell if you want, I don't care. And uh, yeah. Share the video with your with your buddies and your pals and whatnot. And if you don't already know, Friday nights, Friday nights, the place to be is on the HVAC Overtime channel. I'm there every Friday night at 9 o'clock. Me and a couple other guys just kind of hang out. We shoot the breeze, talk about the industry, talk about um, mostly HVAC-related stuff. Sometimes we don't. We get off on a tangent. But, uh, yeah, tune in. Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, HVAC Overtime channel on YouTube there. I'll put a link down below for you. We'll see you guys in the next one.